Facebook sounds exactly like the Fed right now, where there's a really high bar for them to do anything, mm -hmm. either hike or ease. What we're really thankful for this holiday season is that the equity market and equity investors are not bullying the Fed into taking rates all the way back to zero. Remember, they said mid-cycle adjustment in their last Fed meeting, and the equity market was up. If they would have said that eight weeks beforehand, Dow would have been down 500 points. Well, they did. Didn't they say that effectively when mm -hmm. they... when they uh, Right, so I'm saying this time around... They cut all... rates in July or whenever it was. Yep. They said this... I think of this as a mid-cycle adjustment. And they and, got hurt for that. And they got hurt. They got but penalized. But in October, the equity market just continued to run. The other thing that I think Steve pointed at, you know, durable goods is a very volatile number. So you want to see... You want to see resiliency there. But I really like the way businesses started spending in this latest durable goods report. The consumer has done all the heavy lifting. Their back hurts, right? The second quarter, third quarter, the consumer has done all this heavy lifting. But core capital shipments and orders, so that excludes defense and, and aircrafts, were the strongest since January. Now, not super strong, but it does show that businesses are starting to spend. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is really important because the consumer can't last this way forever. And then just in terms of the trade war, I, I, I think if it involves layoffs or it involves a spike in interest rates, those are the two things that would get our attention. Because it hurts the consumer? Yes. Okay. So the labor market's super tight here still. Uh, Lindsay, does, does the beige book back up your thesis that the Fed is misassessing the economy in terms of its strength? Well, I think it does, because the Beige Book is showing, again, that the U.S. economy is moderate at best. So this doesn't support the thesis that the Fed has been putting out there, that the economy is on strong footing and will continue to remain on that strong footing, thus allowing the committee to move to the sideline, presumably, as we look out to the end of the year and into 2020. So when we look at the Beige Book, what we're seeing is evidence of ongoing weakness. We saw the weakness talked about in the consumer sector, specifically the retail sector. And the consumer has been the sole support to the economy uh, for the past six months. Even with this morning's read showing two tenths higher, when we look at the composition, you're still talking about the consumer caring for the economy. Now we're starting to see some of that weakness filter into the labor market. Yes, there is a lingering skills mismatch. Some employers are having a difficult time filling those positions, but that's one component. What we're still seeing is a lot of uh, hesitancy on the part of businesses to expand and grow and take on new employees. And that's going to continue to put downward pressure, as we expect, on wages, which have already flatlined. So I do think that there is a lot of weakness in the fundamentals that the Fed may be overlooking mm -hmm. as they're seemingly very comfortable with the three rate cuts that we've already seen since And July. they're certainly comfortable, though, Lindsay. The one thing you cannot argue is that the labor market is very, very strong. I mean, I can't argue. I mean, maybe well, you I can. I, I think there's parts of the labor market that are strong. And certainly when you talk about a sub-4% unemployment level, that feels pretty good. But as we've heard from a number of Fed officials, specifically Cash Kari out of Minneapolis, he said, look, the unemployment rate is a worthless number. You have to add in all of the dropouts, all of the discouraged workers that have been sitting on the sideline for years. And when we add them back in, that unemployment rate push, pushes closer to 7 8%. That tells a very different story of what we're seeing out in the labor market. So I do think that there's still a, a lingering disconnect between what the civilian unemployment numbers are telling us and what we're actually feeling out in the labor market. You think there's a recession on the way, Lindsay? It sounds like it. I don't know if we see a technical recession, back-to-back uh -huh. -back quarters of negative growth, but I certainly see the economy waning and, and losing momentum. Okay. And arguably, the bigger concern is not following in, uh, excuse me, falling into recession, but going into a period of anemic growth where we're unable to get GDP back above 1%. So the market rally that we're seeing, record highs every day, um, is this a market melt-up that's a trade, or do you think this is a continuation of, a, of an actual rally? Yeah, so, Melissa, the pain trade is still higher in equities. You don't see the S&P going up by 27% in a year if everybody's fully invested, right? So I think all of the cash on the sidelines that you're seeing continues to be a melt-up story. Also, it, is, it supports PEs, price to earnings, right? What investors are willing to pay for earnings. I think if you go from 17 times to 18 times on the market, that's worth 5%. In, in a world where trade is not escalating, as Steve said, maybe we are close to a deal. And in low rates, that supports multiples at these levels with just a little bit of earnings growth. The way that you get real double-digit returns on the, on the market is if you get growth plus earnings, but you could still get some multiples.